hey everybody welcome to a new week um i hope that you have enjoyed the previous episodes i've done i know they've been quite long and probably needs to take you a while to watch them and i hope you'll get to it because i think the information that i shared is very crucial just to basically help you figure out which platform to sell on or how to figure out selling on all the platforms for all of you who've been interacting with the posts i want to thank you so much it really really does help youtube suggest the videos and the content to other people and helps the channel grow and i hope you will enjoy this new series we are going to be talking all about sustainable fashion or eco fashion and i hope that you will be enlightened because i know sometimes figuring out how to make your business more sustainable uh, with the word you keep hearing being thrown around especially during this day and age where it's even a requirement i'm just going to explain a bit about it um maybe you're already doing some of the practices and you didn't know but i will explain more in this episode so let's begin <laughs> So what is sustainable fashion? So basically, um, in a nutshell, it is like an overhaul of the system. Basically, people are trying to think about the people who work within fashion because for a long time, um, the practices for producing clothes have been very, very unfair, especially in markets that do a lot of uh, manufacturing, especially for fast fashion, the mass produced things, which usually happens mostly in Asia, um, and I think South America because uh, the labor force there for a very long time has been where people manufacture clothes so things like how the workers are paid the conditions they're working in the chemicals they handle safety gear all those things there are some uh, big manufacturing hubs in Africa as well um, I know here in Kenya we have that Ethiopia also has that and so far i haven't had any complaints about the kenyan side i don't know if the pay is usually fair but i know it, the fashion manufacturing sector does employ a lot of people uh but i know in ethiopia there has been a few issues here and there so there is that part then there is a part of the kind of materials that are being used fast fashion brands tend to use synthetic fiber that don't disintegrate very easily so it's not good for the environment and also the high turnover of clothes meaning people are buying more clothes that of bad quality and dumping them sooner so it creates a whole cycle of pollution as well and also before because the west is one that really controls majority of the fashion industry uh, clothes were just made for the four seasons summer winter uh, spring and autumn but now there are even mid-season clothes that are being manufactured especially by fast fashion brands i think some of them like Shein, i think uh, manufacture almost weekly new clothes which is very impractical but they're also using very cheap fabric they don't really care too much for you to return it if it doesn't fit you well so you end up dumping it and the pricing is very 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 bad you just think about if you're buying an outfit for five dollars really think about how much the material cost how much was that person paid you might feel make yourself feel better and say ah, they were making volumes um for someone who makes clothes i'm telling you those practices are very very unfair and sometimes you find that the conditions they're working in is not even good for them next week i'm talking more about the movement for creating better environment for people who make clothes um, so watch out for that video it's part of the fashion revolution movement it is uh, um, they have um, a, a, an annual event for called fashion revolution it's usually a week long and everywhere there's a theme and they really explain ways that people can make their practices better and just make also buyers more aware of what they should look out for when they are purchasing from fashion brands so 
that's what I'm going to discuss next week because it's very much in line with sustainable fashion and everything like that. I hope you've gotten the gist of it. I wanted to really just break it down and explain it in a way you'd understand because I know big words are usually thrown around and we're well, like, so, okay, what exactly do you want us to do? Yeah, so hope that has been helpful. So, there are long-term benefits for having sustainable fashion practices. So I'm going to take you through a couple of them, maybe just to highlight it. And this part will really focus more on the businesses because I think it also makes you aware of what you need when you're purchasing, what you really need to think about. Um, because it's about the environmental impact of also the materials you use to produce your clothes. So why sustainable fashion is important? Because it helps to reduce waste. So waste is not just about maybe the fabrics that you're left with after you've produced a garment. Um, if you can get it to zero waste, it's, it's very, very good because that means that when you're cutting, when you're designing your outfit, you already have a plan on how you want to use your fabric and try to reduce waste as much as possible. I can say that here in Kenya, I have seen people be very creative with their leftover fabrics. Um, sometimes fabric scraps are used for smaller sewing projects or craft projects that you could give people. People even stuff sofas with them, pillows with them and all that. So it's very, very important to check how you use your leftover fabric, even if you're using natural fabric. The other thing is the chemical composition of the fabric. I know here we are not very much aware of the chemicals used in dyeing processes or manufacturing processes because most of our fabric is imported. The fabrics that are locally available, most of them are cotton or polyester mixed with cotton or polyester, but they are used in manufacturing uh, mostly large scale things like uniforms for um, corporates or schools and things like that. So um, I know that diverse, the diverse fabrics we get, majority of them are imported and we, most of the time, we don't really ask what they are made of. I think the time we are usually really aware of the content of the fabric is if we are about to export because it's a very big requirement to know what the fabrics contain. So I think knowing what the fabric contains, the chemicals that have been used, the dyes that have been used, the processes that were used, um, one of the things that sometimes you overlook is things like denim that use a lot of water. Water usage is also part of the problem because if water is used for more than just making clothes and also how dirty water is disposed of can also affect the environment and affect the people living in certain environments which is a very big problem especially in Asia um, so all that is part of waste management so it helps reduce waste another thing is energy management basically your energy is being used that has also started um, becoming something that people really really discuss one of the things i have noticed that um, more development has started happening in towards energy is the machines we use um, there are different types of ways to manage how energy is used okay um, apart from energy there's also noise our machines make a lot of noise so when you're a one when you're sewing with one industrial machine it might not make so much of a difference but if you're in a factory of many industrial machines it makes a difference so what I've noticed at least with industrial machines the newer ones you buy they don't even have to be computerized but I've noticed there is less noise from the motor which is all very very good because it's also a way of managing energy because the other thing they've done is that they've tried to make it not use so much electricity which also reduces your cost some factories have also adapted using solar panels um, green energy so that they don't have to use um, to be connected directly to the grid to reduce how much energy they use so that's another sustainable practice it definitely does have more impact if you are doing manufacturing at a larger scale but I do think that if you start from the very beginning uh, when you're a smaller business, having, thinking about the energy you use, um, the source of energy you use when you're manufacturing, I think it really does help you when you scale it up so that you don't have to start changing things. I know a lot of factories have had to rethink that because some of these things are actually checked 
when you're trying to export because of how seriously they're trying to take um, fashion to be more sustainable um, they do check your manufacturing process and this is one of the things they do check so use of energy is very important there is the other aspect of cruelty free fashion um, especially with this new generation of young adults Gen Z cruelty free is very very important so that means a lot of people really think about if you're using products from animals and if you are using products from animals if they are being treated the right way so if it's um, wool from sheep or leather from various animals and all that how was it sourced and all that so people do check that people also check if you're using plants it might not necessarily be cruel although it is cruel to humans because in the end um, not having trees and plants actually does affect our ecosystem but also how you use the plants and you use um, the processes you're using to manufacture fibers to make fabric and things like that so cruelty free has also become very very important and you can also try and purchase from people who have been verified that they are being cruelty free then there is the ethical fashion ethical fashion is usually mostly about how you treat your workers and how much you pay your workers i know that generally it's not always possible to pay a lot because some margins for some of the clothes are really really small but i think that as much as possible it's important to treat people fairly to make sure their work conditions are good um, and to make sure that they, they earn enough to be able to sustain themselves. There's nothing um, good about paying someone less just because it's what you can afford and yet they can barely even come to work to work and can't feed their families and you're taking so much from them. It's better to hire less people and figure out how they can work even part-time for you and part-time for someone else. There are so many ways to go about it. One of the practices I do to be fair is for now, I'm not really paying a salary, I pay per piece and I negotiate with the tailor how much I will pay and I have not necessarily kept them in my workshop if I do not have work for them, they are free to look for work various places and I even recommend them sometimes to other people just so that they do have a way to earn money and of course it's a disadvantage to losing out on having a very good tailor but I would rather do that than keep someone and completely pay them um, very little money and they can't be able to sustain themselves. So some of these practices are very, very important. I don't think it's worth um, making your brand so big and making um, so much money and treating people poorly because the problem with doing that even when you can't afford it is that when you grow bigger that you it's very difficult for you to actually change those practices so it's wiser to just do it from the word go just treat people fairly yeah so those are the tips and i wanted to mention that there is some there's a big word called greenwashing as well um generally there are people who've been accused of greenwashing some brands have been accused of greenwashing where they pretend that they have all these sustainable practices in place for PR and marketing purposes but they don't really practice them on the ground so that really came up a lot especially with the Rana Plaza um, collapse in Bangladesh which I'll talk more about next week when we talk about fashion revolution because it's what actually spiked that revolution um, so do watch out for brands that do greenwashing they're actually people who do sustainable brands from the word go and they they are in websites that actually check if you're following all this and they only put sustainable brands in their sites so if you're a sustainable brand and you know that you're doing things the right way try and get onto those sites because people are taking them more and more seriously as time proceeds and here in africa i can say you making a made to measure outfit is a pretty sustainable practice because you're not mass producing a lot of clothes that people will not wear so that is actually a practice that we have culturally here um, that is definitely influenced a lot by our various body sizes and the fact that 
our manufacturing systems have failed us so to some extent it has been a blessing in disguise so do continue with your made to measure brand try and see how you can scale it if you can and if you can do made to order where your clothes are on a website and people make to order that's also another way you can be sustainable as a fashion brand because i know it can be very very stressful you're trying to build a brand and there are all these new rules but i think in the end if you just keep at it you'll be able to figure out how to do it best so now i want to talk all about sustainable shopping or purchasing so i'm going to tell you more about shopping in a sustainable way i know some of these practices weirdly enough here in kenya or in some um, other african countries maybe majority of them we already do them it's just part of the culture and it's also because of circumstances so it can be very very weird that now it's a trend and considering how it's perceived in our own countries but either way i think it's good to highlight them because we already much ahead of the world in some of these practices and maybe we can just elevate them to the next level so here are some sustainable shopping practices that you could do so number one which is funny is <laughs> it's funny for us to some extent um, because it's usually considered very more of a charitable practice from the west but buying thrifted clothes thrifted clothes just means secondhand clothes in kenya we call them tumba and they are basically the fabrics that are brought here um, the truth is that people do buy those those clothes in bundles and then they resell them to people as thrifted clothes um, there are various types of levels of thrifted clothes there are people who actually sell them in a physical store and then there are people who sell them in the markets and i'm not saying that the market clothes you can't get good clothes but it just takes longer to find things so the ones that are in a boutique may cost a, a bit more because you, you do less work of searching through it anyway so that's the gist of it so by thrifted clothes is a way of shopping sustainably the other one that I try to use a lot is using natural fibers. Um, I try to use natural fibers as much as possible because I like my fibers being breathable and working with fibers that will be able to decompose and all that. So majority of the time I like to work with cotton-based fabric. I know to some extent that cotton is not good for the environment because of how much water it uses but i also do check um, the other benefits of using cotton and also the type of cotton i do buy lasts longer i'm very particular about where i buy my fabrics from so using natural fibers is also a very sustainable sorry buying clothes that have natural fibers is a very sustainable way of shopping because if the garment is discarded it will disintegrate unlike the polyesters and satins and stuff like that they don't decompose i'm not saying that there is no place for um synthetic fab fibers um there are places that you could use synthetic fibers if of course recycling is also possible um but the more you shop for clothes that have natural fibers the better it is for the environment because of what it's made of so bamboo cotton silk um, linen all those are very good options so the other one is building a capsule wardrobe having a capsule wardrobe helps you have just versatile clothes so many options because if you have a capsule wardrobe you have your statement pieces you have the classic pieces and then you also you have your accessories and everything like that and the way you combine them will definitely help you have more options of clothes so if you have three neutral colored skirts black white and probably gray or something and then you have different colored blouses that you can match them with all those skirts or trousers and stuff like that then with a purse and all that you'll find that if you do different combinations of everything you will have a versatile wardrobe i did talk about that last year i will link 
that video in the description so that you could learn more about um, capsule wardrobes maybe it will help you um, and it also helps you be more sustainable there's nothing wrong with having a few statement pieces for those big events but generally most of us kind of wear the same kind of things um, every day so that also is a sustainable way of shopping you could also opt to just rent clothes for those special occasions so renting clothes is definitely a sustainable practice because it gets more use from different people and you don't have to own it if you're only going to wear it once and i'm talking to you some of you brides i know you like spending a lot of money on a big on a on a gown that you will only wear once in your entire life and it's not necessarily the most practical it's also a choice some some um bridal designers have started opting to buy back some gowns and repurpose them for other clients and rent those so it's possible to figure out my advice would be especially if you're a bride try and think of a silhouette that is versatile to different body shapes if you really do want to later sell your gown if you don't sell your gown later then i guess you could do whatever it is you want but um, apart from weddings there's also evening gowns influencers go for a lot of events influencers and celebrities and all that so renting may make more sense and i would still advise all of you who go for events please pay something for the clothes that you get it it is actually not ethical to just always get things for free from people who are running a business it's important that you also support the business so they can actually stay in business another option is to swap clothes so if you are someone size and you're both tired of the clothes you have you could decide to switch things around and swap clothes there was a time there were swap parties that were very very popular for some reason they stopped i guess because of how much people thrift here swap parties don't necessarily make too much sense because people could easily opt to thrift um, new clothes because it's probably even sometimes costs cheaper so swapping clothes is an option so you could easily switch things around and if you are trying to just build your capsule wardrobe you could actually just sweep certain pieces swap, swap certain pieces so that it works with your current wardrobe then lastly shopping locally is a very very sustainable way um, to shop so because you're going to be supporting a local vendor and you're not going to be importing clothes and basically you're reducing your carbon footprint you know we don't normally think about carbon footprints as individuals it's usually more for companies but our practices actually inform companies and businesses on what the consumer wants so shopping locally also does help the environment it's why a lot of these western countries are really pushing more people to shop locally and adding more and more taxes to international brands so do think about supporting your local vendors local designers like me who can make for you your clothes and reduce your carbon footprint so that's all this week um, i hope you have learned something and i hope that i've helped you run a more sustainable business and shop more sustainably because we all still buy clothes even us we buy clothes and for me i can honestly tell you i am a very big pro made in kenya designer so apart from wearing my own clothes like today um i think i've worn three other designers my earrings were a local designer my top was made locally and my tights were made locally and i am really really pro shopping locally and supporting local fashion because i also want our industry to grow and employ more people so i hope um i'll see you next week thank you so much for watching this for once it was an all slide video so see you thank you bye